I'm going to do a rundown on X-Men Apocalypse's upcoming teams because frankly I don't trust or particularly like either of them. This may sound a little odd because honestly I'm actually pretty excited for Apocalypse and I like all of the X-Men that are involved in it but there's just something about the way that everything adds up that just doesn't quite agree with me. So for those who don't know Apocalypse as a character, he's cited as being one of the first mutants, sometimes he's said to be the very first mutant that ever existed within the X-Men universe. He comes from ancient Egypt and he has four followers who he enhances with alien technology that he has himself. Uh, that he calls the Four Horsemen, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. So he dubs one death, one pestilence, one famine, and one war. And then these guys go out, they're basically his harbingers. They go out and they just destroy everyone because he's so powerful. He doesn't have to. And that's something I feel is the sign of an amazing villain. When somebody's so strong that they don't even have to do anything. It's kind of what Marvel are doing with Thanos in uh, the MCU as well, where... Thanos is so powerful that he doesn't even have to do anything. Everyone already knows that he's the strongest, so he just goes, oh, Loki, go and do this. Ronan, go, go and do this, because I, I don't even have to get out of my floating chair. But Apocalypse is probably the most famous for this within comic books, and for a pretty good reason. He always picks the most powerful people. He's had Wolverine in his Four Horsemen before. He's had Hulk. Like, he gets top-notch heroes and villains to go and do his bidding. And his lineup in X-Men Apocalypse is pretty intimidating when you look at it. He's got Magneto, he's got Storm, who's always cited as being one of the most powerful mutants. He's got Psylocke, who's somebody we haven't seen in the X-Men movies yet. And then he's got Angel. Now, if this was taking place in the comics and I was reading it, I'd be pretty concerned for the well-being of our heroes, because these are four top-tier mutants that he's got in his team. But within the X-Men movie universe, like, there's just something about it that doesn't worry me at all. So, let's start with Magneto. This is a character who we've seen literally lift a baseball stadium with his powers, reprogram mutants using metal, like, he is of an unconceivable strength level. But within these historical X-Men movies, be it uh, First Class, or Days of Future Past, Magneto is one of the main characters, he's one of the protagonists. He's a protagonist turned antagonist. We followed his tragic story since Auschwitz to the Cuban Missile Crisis and paralyzing Charles Xavier to apparently killing JFK to almost killing Nixon. And so if he then goes to the X-Mansion and slaughters all of the students, that just doesn't fit with what they've been doing with his character. Seeing Storm's introduction into the X-Men universe uh, is fantastic because we've always seen her as Halle Berry. She was in the X-Men when Wolverine first joined, so she's always just been a mainstay of the cast. And finally, we get to see what happens when she just unleashes her powers, which is something I think Apocalypse will be doing on a pretty major scale. Ultimately, because Storm is such a recognizable character to us, she's just not that threatening. Like, we've seen her be taken down by Toad in the first X-Men movie, we saw her get impaled in Days of Future Past. Like, we know how powerful she is, but at the same time, she's weak. And it should be easily possible for even Beast just to hit her in the face and she's out of the game. Then we have Psylocke, who's just somebody that we haven't seen in the X-Men movies before. Psylocke is one of the most powerful telepathic mutants in the X-Men. She is somebody who is so powerful that she can channel her psionic energy into an actual physical blade. But again, in this situation, I'm just not that intimidated by her. Because with all of the most powerful telepathic mutants, they're always so incredibly overpowered that they have some ridiculous weakness one way or another. For example, with Professor X, he is always cited as being the most powerful telepath on the planet, so he can't walk. Or with Jean Grey, she's so powerful that she's actually not powerful at all. Like, if she was to use the full extent of her powers, then she could destroy the entire world. But because of that, generally most of the time she's useless and everyone else has to save her. 
But this isn't the case with Psylocke. With Psylocke, she's a powerful telepath, and also, she's a trained ninja. She is, in fact, so physically intimidating that I just don't buy her mutant powers as being as strong as the people that she's going up against. Psylocke is an incredible warrior, but is she the telepath that Charles Xavier is? No. Is she even the telepath that Jean Grey is? Well, certainly not, because Jean Grey could destroy an entire planet with her energy. And in this movie, she's going to have to go up against both of them. So I just don't think that she really stands a chance here. And then finally, we have Angel. Angel's mutant powers are exactly what you think they would be with a name like Angel. He has big white wings. He's also fantastically rich, but I don't think that's something that's going to factor into Apocalypse that much. Warren Worthington is one of the original X-Men in the comics, but he's always the least powerful out of the others. He's not as strong as Cyclops, he's not a gifted leader. Jean Grey obviously is of an immense power. Beast is super intelligent, and Iceman in the comics recently has gone from being just able to shoot a bit of ice to being like an Omega level mutant. Whereas Angel just has wings. Now, in the comics, this is where Apocalypse comes in, because Apocalypse takes Angel, who is the symbol of good, and then tears him down. He removes Angel's mutant wings and replaces them with technological wings that shoot razors from them and turns him into a monster called Archangel. Archangel is a monster who has absolutely no regard for human life, but at the end of the day, he's still just a guy with knife wings. It should be possible for any of the more recognisable X-Men to at least put up a good fight against Archangel. And then finally, we have uh, Oscar Isaac's Apocalypse. He's this Guatemalan Egyptian cross, which I'm quite excited to see. But we haven't seen him do anything that physically intimidating yet, from the trailers at least. We've seen him push down Professor X. But other than that, we haven't seen what power set they're giving him within the movie. Comic book wise, Apocalypse should be able to wipe the floor with pretty much all of the X-Men at the same time, which usually renders the Horseman a little bit mute, because the moment the fight gets to Apocalypse, the fight's over. And this is another reason that I just don't see the Four Horsemen as being that intimidating, because all of his Horsemen are heroes. Storm, we know, will join the X-Men, Psylocke is an X-Man, Angel is an X-Man, the only one who is not is Magneto, and he has to be the redeemable character in all of this. To me, this means that there has to be a betrayal on part of one, if not all, of the horsemen at some point or another, because the X-Men team is a bunch of teenagers led by a shapeshifter, like, they've got nothing that can even remotely harm Apocalypse. Which is something that I will leave for my next video on this. So. Tell me what you think. Do you think that the Four Horsemen in X-Men Apocalypse are maybe not as scary as they should be? Who would you have as your X-Men movie Horsemen? Let us know in the comments, and thank you for listening to Awful Commentary. We'll see you next time.